Dignitas come out looking strong in game one. Can they keep that going here in game two is going to be the question. Picks and bans will get those up here on the screen for you and see where SK wants to regroup. Is it in those picks phase, though, Tolly, that is the question that I'm asking you. I mean, do you think they need to go back to this triple warrior composition? Is it, or is it that they just let too much of Dignitas' comfort picks through? I don't necessarily have a problem with a triple warrior composition, but when you're up against such a mobile comp as yeah. a Giannis player, now they did have Amaterasu there as well, trying to fight fire with fire, but Giannis portals, I think, is just superior to the Amaterasu yeah. movement speed aura. Terra and Thoth going to be the first bands. Dignitas banning the support, and SK banning the mage. Achilles going to come out as well. I believe these are the same bans we saw for Dignitas last time. They do not want to deal with Terra and Achilles. Two pretty strong gods right now, so get those out of there. And then Nemesis going to be the ban for SK. It's really surprising that SK opted here for second pick. After yeah. you lose, you decide where you want to go. And yet again, given out the happen. Giannis here, I guess SK don't necessarily have a problem with that because they would rather get the so big for themselves. And this is what they're going to do. Pull this one away from Variety, who looked really strong on it last game totally. So don't let him have that. But this Giannis being selected for zeros again. I mean, this one's kind of scary to me. I mean, it, Zero's played it so well, able to move around the map so easily. Plenty of damage. I mean, that's, like you said, what enabled the whole team. And I think that right now, SK Gaming are not doing their own identity. They're stripping away some of the key components sure. here from Dignitas, the Sobek, the Circuit. I don't think Dignitas have an issue with this because there's so many good junglers still available that they can really get Ratatasker, Dodgy, Susano. All those gods, Cuba Fred, can play at a very high level. Fafnir going to be the next selection for Dignitas. Got the Hindu man stamp of approval during the cast, I believe. He was a little bit happier with some of those hammers this time. He's just kind of poking fun, but... Going to be a strong selection for Dig as well as this Ratatosker. That's going to help pair well with this Giannis and give them some semi-global presence to go along with the global from Giannis. Nua yet again for Lobster. You talk about global on oh, one side, yeah. global for another. So there's going to be a lot of damage spread out as long as that they can get to that late game position. If they're going to fall behind that early, there's just really no hope for some of their later gods. Yeah, it's going to be tough if they can't even make it to that point. But you're so right, Tolly. Look at the Sobek and the Serket. They really are trying to take away some of what was strong for this Dignitas roster last time. They do still have the Fafnir. They do still have the Giannis. But other than that, most of the rest of it's been taken away. Surprised to see this Rom ban this time around. Last time it was the Yonher in this slot. This time it's the Rom. They really respect the late game potential out of Arco, really showing that he can flex his god pool. We never even got to see that late game potential either. I mean, it was, it was so dominant early on, really, from all five members of Dignitas. So they're going to take that one off the board. They want something else to beat him. Dignitas banned the Kukulin, so we won't get to see that one. But it will be Cerberus that is selected in its place. And there it is. All the globals you could possibly want of the Dignitas squad, really. That's getting a little scary. It was funny to see yesterday how United prioritized this pick, Athena, yeah. a lot here. And now it's being ninth pick specifically <laughs> from Dignitas. And Apollo oh, wow. selected here for Funballer. Not a very common god in the SPL. But I kind of like this. I mean, Funball, all these players really have been around for a long time. But Funballer is, like, really OG. And so is Apollo. So it's, like, something that he's literally been playing for years and years. I mean, he's gonna, I feel like he's going to look comfortable on this Apollo. I definitely would have to agree with you. I think that the split push potential is really strong. And I think their team fighting is definitely there as well. Great self-peel as well with the Mesmerize. You're really yeah. looking to split the map with the Apollo. The question is going to be how well can SK respond to this global pressure? Because you mentioned E-United. We've seen these global compositions when they get those number advantages. They're so strong, totally. That's true. The double guardian here from Sobek Cerberus leads me to believe that they could definitely win this one. It's not yeah. like the first game, but Dignitas, they're going to be looking to be aggressive. If Dignitas gets denied early, I think that SK wins. SK can win if they deny him early. If not, Dig might get out of control. Let's go ahead and get over to Tom and Graham and see if that's going to be the case. Well, let's get gaming this time around. Bit of a switch up. They've got a little bit more early game with this uh, cat too. But then I also see some Nuwar and I see some Apollo. And I, immediately my brain wants to feel split push late game, get ourselves back into it if we need to. Sure. I personally just love the Apollo pick. Um, I think he's been missing for a while. Yeah, Apollo Apollo's strong in his own right. Really important stuff here. The global presence will be really nice. And again, Funball just pilots this god correctly. Who do you guys in Mixer Chat think are going to win this game? We'll have a little look at the poll during the game. Obviously, most of you are probably going to be voting for Dig here. D <coughs> Dignitas, the absolute top card, SK Gaming. There's a new team coming out, then. No, SK. I, that's, <laughs> that, that's my SK imp uh, impression. I'm choking. Oh, choking. Oh, oh, that was brutal. 
There was no need for that. Sorry to steal your thing, but like, you know, it happens. That's savage. <laughs> That's a, you need to get in that house by the fire giant. <laughs> Variety, though, going to be piloting the Athena in the solo mm -hmm. lane. Love it. Athena solo. They take his so back. He picks Athena. Is he just now becoming a guardian? Is that what's happening to this young lad from Scouse land? <laughs> well, Variety... I actually really love this, this Athena pick in the solo lane. I love this for a number of reasons. So obviously, Defender of Olympus, and she clears all well and fine. Sure. Uh, but the big deal is that she's going to be able to interrupt that oh, channeled breath I'm from I'm glad Ducky. you brought that up, because that was the big point of this one, where it's, that, a, it's a specific lane matchup that's yep. going to be useful. Very similar to how Athena and Ares, you can cancel out the chains, potentially, if you time it right, but also the saving flesh. Yep. Same sort of thing against Ducky here. That breath is where the wave clear really comes from. When I see the Cerberus, when I even see... even So, like, the Cerberus, I think, is the, is the key matchup here. But even against characters like Bologna, I like the Athena. The problem is, when you're going into Bologna, for example, the Warriors, as a Guardian, as Athena, you're going to be on the back foot for a little while. As Athena, Guardian versus Guardian here with the Ducky matchup, I much prefer... This, you're going to be able to do all that interrupt that we were talking about, and you're going to be on the same level as far as dealing with the nonsense that your opposition is bringing. There's a really nice ward at the edge of the jungle that SK have placed there between tier one and tier two with Addictitas' tower just on the left hand side. That is a nice little path area to keep an eye out there for the rat rotating around this area. And it's also the vision range of where Lobster is, really. So Lobster can't really see between that tier one and tier two. So The timing right now at 45 seconds is exactly why they put that ward down. Ratatasker, more like 39 to 40, but really the reality of it is that ward is there to see what Rat does is at the going beginning red, of the game. Or is he going blue? Exactly. That instance is going blue. Zeros will pick up the red. Might get spied out by the ward there, but it's fine. Duo lane, interesting mix here. Obviously, Sobek and Apollo versus Fafnir and Anher. Definitely an interesting starting position here. Wave clear advantage would be with Funball with the basics if he can land them. Yeah, Funball on the Apollo definitely has to make use of the uh, the audacity. That's the passive, of course. Going to be able to fire multiple shots quicker than Arkel. Arkel, however, stripping away the protection. So both of these characters really important to land the basic attacks. Look at that difference there. In season one, you would have seen that fight over those left-hand harpies. In season two, some, sorry, season two and three, four, five, well, now five. <laughs> They're like, yeah, okay, you got that first. Yeah, All right, we're, we're not going to fight that. We'll just take the right ones instead. Yep. Easy peasy here for Cubo Fred on the uh, the jungle right of Tasker, who has been a nice look for some of the North American players. Mask actually won the uh, the uh, the counter punch, or, or how you want to say it was Mask on Trifecta against Counter Logic Gaming. Trifecta definitely not predicted to win that one, and Mask kind of single handedly brought it to CLG with the Ratatasker selection. It's a very powerful character in the hands of Cubo Fred. I expect nothing less than the best. Tell you what, though, North America just touched on that real quick. Wow, what an amazing day yesterday, and they still got yeah. another one coming up this week. Three games tomorrow for North America that will. Give a big idea of who might be actually making the land now. Yeah, all the teams really close. Don't forget, 16 league means only the top two will make it out to land. So in both of these in both of these leagues, both NA and EU, we've got about three and a half great teams. And there's only room for two of there's them. There's only room for two, indeed. And the one thing is, we're going to see more international teams this year as mm. well. They'll be coming out from the SGS to actually partake and take on some of the best teams from Europe and North America. So we'll get to see all those teams in action a little bit more regularly. Yep. So a little bit more international competition, which I'm looking forward to. Yeah, the SGS has been a lot of fun. Monday through Friday, we've got uh, the, the global series going on, whether it's Brazil, Southeast Asia, Latin America, and of course, Oceania. So we've got a lot of different leagues going on there and, and being able to watch them throughout the year and being able to keep eyes on them, really, really important. Because frankly, there's a lot of fun players out there. I want to see Kliz play every week. There is. And the funny thing about Kliz is that there's going to be a league coming back to the SGS now. So those teams will be mm. partaking in a league format. Four teams in each of those regions means we get to see the, you know, the cream rise to the yeah. top of that region. So we'll have more background on how these play styles mesh and work. I'm excited about that as well. Right now we're in uh, week three of four in the SGS phases. And then from there, we'll go on to see the top of the top Good face off beans. against each other. Immediate beads. And he's Fumball are getting ganked straight away. That timing was to perfection. They baited who the best in for that pluck and then annihilated his carry straight afterwards. But not only is carry, they'll take his life too. Arkill gets the double.
wonderful play here and, and and i'm writing i'm taking the spark notes because team dignitas one of the best teams in the world still chances to improve one of the criticisms that this team has had is that they find their wins and their victories ver uh based on individual prowess and that works up to an extent then when you play against the teams that have the same individual skill like rival you wind up kind of in a bind here there was two couple of plays in game number one that kind of showed me and then here that play right there dignitas operating more as a team i'm seeing more of this unification from these guys and that's really good news if you're a dignitas fan well i mean we knew sk were gonna have it tough today the main reason i'm trying to bring up in game one but right now is a good point the front line for Dignitas here, with Cubo, Fred, and Trickstank being two of the major ones, they played with Fumballer and Lobster, who were the carries of that team. So you know how the carries of your team used to function. You yep. know where their weak points are. You know what they're going to be thinking, and you abuse that. And it's not even like they played together maybe a season. They played forever. <laughs> really did. Last year, when Variety left Obey Alliance to create his own team, does it Fury used? Great med. But is the hammer going to connect? That's the question. Not going to use it. Trix is trying to just hold the aggro for our kill to get the actual kill. Not going to find it there. I guess hammer was on cooldown then because he didn't throw it. Yeah, it kind of had it. to be, I guess. It must have been. Eesh. <laughs> Rough stuff for fun ball. Oh, right hand side. That's why the new war ult's coming out because there's pressure on the right here. The dot damage is taken from the circuit, but it's not going to be enough to kill Cubo Fred, who is forced back to base there as SK got a little bit aggressive in Dignitas' jungle. Right. You've got an Athena solo. That's a character that she can confirm the blue, but if you're there to mess with her during it, we'll have an issue. That's why we see SK pay so much attention to this enemy jungle and, in fact, recommitting Lobster coming over here from the mid lane ensuring that Variety is not going to have that blue buff available. Yeah, blue taken down and on the backside of that you also saw fails. Take down the own blue for safety as well. Just make sure that goes into the coffers of SK and nowhere Oof. else. But yeah, going back to what we were talking about after, it's always tough to be two carries on a team that have your former frontliners against you. Yeah. Because they just know you. They know how you play. They know where your weak points are how to abuse what you're thinking. Funball wasn't on the team that won the launch tournament. That was Smek who played alongside these guys when they were under the TSM banner in 2013. But now as we're here in season five, Funball joined the squad a little bit after and has been playing with these guys for three, four years at this point. So yeah, it's not just so much, oh, I know this guy sort of likes this <laughs> exactly. or likes that. It's, I know his family. We went to the barbecue and the cookout together. I know what makes these guys tick. I'm when you, when you talk about making it tick too, it's like in throughout the seasons of playing together, you'll be like, hey, listen, I don't do very well in this situation, so keep me out of this situation. Well, then you take that stuff into the games when you're playing against them now and go, hey, guys, he doesn't like this situation, so let's put him in that situation. <laughs> exactly. And Team Dignitas know exactly how to handle that one. And I was talking about how Kivo, Fred, and Trix Tank has ha have had more success than Lobster and Funballer across the way. And... You know, it's 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 been uh, a troublesome look for Lobster and Funball because I think that Funball still is of the same level of prowess. Lobster and Funball just no disrespect to Ducky Fails and who the best, they're not the same caliber of players that Cubo, Fred, and Trix Tank have been able to surround themselves with. Well, let's find out what happens with SK here because at the moment it's been slow going. Just those two kills on the left hand side. It's no real difference between the two, just the gold from those two kills really separating these teams at the moment. It's not screaming an advantage for either team because I do feel that SK heading to the later stages do put on a bit of a show here as well, even though Dignitas have that Giannis, which everybody is definitely more focused on. Not the same type of late game team as game number one. No. Funball trading in the Kronos for the Apollo brings him a little bit closer to that mid game stride but sk gaming short a little bit later end when you certainly would look at the guardian solo and you've got the arkle on the on her who really hits his peak in the mid game so sure i'll give you that I'm not but at the same time i want to see sk gaming kind of bite back earlier i'm just kind of expecting a split push i don't know why i just feel this apollo is probably going to be like all right i'm going to rotate late because they're going to group up 
We have a very defensive sort of composition put together here, which will allow me to split push. And if I get under pressure, across the sky I go, Yarnasult comes out, used, yep. and I'm already out of the danger zone. Yeah, I mean, that's not a bad look, which is why also for Team Dukatas love the Athena <laughs> and the Ratatasker, yeah. both of which can sort of respond in the nick of time and really come and make a big deal about that. So, fun ball, playing the Apollo, is the split push on the table? Absolutely. I don't think it's strategy numero uno, no. but it's certainly an option to shift into. It's definitely not, though. Mention the Athena again because of the teleport and Athena's ultimate. Like, she can just come and sit under the tower and go, no, Apollo, you won't get this tower. And if you try and rotate, I'll beat you there with my own ultimate. I'm actually really surprised to kind of see the teleport come out from the Athena here. Usually from our Athena solos, if they do wind up to be in a problem where they need to teleport, they'll ask one of their teammates to rotate over there, back to base, and then just Athena... Uh, Athena ult over into that so they can get some more team fight relics. And I actually really think that's the reason it's gone to the teleport is because they're just a little bit concerned in case that Apollo does decide to do that split push. So it gives them the option of still getting to the fight. Talking about the fight, Lobster's gonna get hit by everything! The timing was perfect, Zeros. Had to rely on his team there, he aimed it way ahead of time, but the team set it up beautifully. The Swedish sniper. Zeros has been on point with his Giannis. Back to when he played jungle for SK Gaming. He brought out the Giannis jungle. He was the first one was. out in season two. Shout out to Cherio, who continuing that legacy three didn't years work. later. I just want to point out, it didn't work then. It didn't work for Cherry. Doesn't work. <laughs> Period. I, you know, I almost <laughs> forgot that Zeros had played alongside that SK Gaming team, meaning back when Badger was on this squad and yep. Funball. He's also part of this equation. Cubo Fred and Trick's Tank were the longer running members of uh, of that world, but Trick Zeros has played against these guys and with these guys as A well. A long time. Our kill's gonna fall down here. The dot damage coming through, and you have already saw who the best was gonna secure anyway. But meanwhile, on the backside is who the best was securing the kill. Fails ends up taking a tumble because of Dick's rotation. That's the solo lane power of Athena coming all the way from the short side. Nothing really that Ducky can gain, and there's absolutely no way he can make the same rotation. Watch him Taunt, get back. And he's gone. Watch him get back for his farm, too, with the teleport. He's not going to miss a single creep. <laughs> he gets all the way over there, gets involved in two kills, and there's like, and back to farming we go. Guys, I'll see you in 194 seconds when my ult and TP is up again and they go for that sort of play. That's, 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 that's the reason you see the teleport there, being able to affect the map on the left side and then immediately come back on the right. Literally not giving anything up. He missed a single minion, and I think two got hit by the tower. Oh, no. I'm fine. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can say that. Guys, I'm going to miss three minions. Is that okay that we get two kills? Is, do you reckon that's a, <laughs> that was a good trade? Okay. Nice, nice discipline by Team Dignitas to not go for the Gold Fury in that response, in that team fight. I think a lot of teams look at the kills that they got and yeah. try, start to try to transition into that objective. But looking at the cooldown, the death timers, and perhaps more importantly, the players that were alive and well, Dignitas realized that because the lead isn't that large, they don't have as big of a window as it might seem, and they don't even attempt it. And I, that's a. Uh, one of the rare conservative calls that I like. Five to one then for Dignitas as they're going to look to take down the Oracle so far. Two kills for Athena, two kills for Anne. Her is where they're split and just one in the jungle from Cubo Fred from that early on game. Our kill going very early into it. Is that going to be a match? I just this early. Interesting. Possibly. It must be. I mean, what else is he going to get? I mean, yeah, it's definitely a Magi's Club, but I, I'm not really sure as to why. The Sobek might it's have okay. been really annoying him in that, in that lane on the left side. Surprising more so because on her, the reason it's more surprising than anything, like, yeah, sure, my, LA Magi's Club, prevent some CC. Cool, right. give you a bit more protections and health. Cool. He's also on her, which means he's got Desert Fury, which is one of the best forms of CC immunity in the game because fire it off and still do damage while staying alive and beads. So why do you need a third form of CC immunity? The big deal about Desert Fury versus some of the other crowd control with CC immunity ultimates is the fact that the cooldown is so incredibly low. Yeah. He always has it available, it seems like. The bead's going to come up after it as well, 75 seconds before it's, any CDR. It's up more often than a Magi's Cloak. Yeah. So when you need to think about that, that's why I'm like, wait, what? Why? why? Yeah, I, I, would, I uh, personally would like to see him just stay aggressive, but I think it's the combination of what happens if you do get plucked mm. by 
by this SK roster. If Huda Best finds that charge prey, you're getting blown up by Lobster's minions, which are stunned, or taunted by fails, right? There's a whole lot of crowd control It could here. be for that, though. I was about to bring that up, that Mez, because Arkill wants to play aggressive in this lane. And the one thing he does every time he jumps in is get Mezzed every single time. That's what Fonbo will be looking to do to try mm -hmm. and counteract it. You don't want to use your beads. You don't no. want to use your Desert Fury. But you will take a match as Cloak game popped, which means you can keep the aggression going. Fun ball, clearly, not just from the build, the character choice, but just player history and tendency, wants to fight. He wants to box. He wants to duel. Even against the Onher, who is one of the better duels, duelers in the game, Apollo can do it. Apollo can fight 2v1 if he uses his Mesmerize right. Not only is he getting that brief pause in the action, but also the protections. Mm. So if Arkel goes that Magi's Cloak, he's not going to be in a position where he gets that stutter step, and he'll be able to fluidly fight against the Apollo. That's really where the uh, Magi Cloak comes in. And the Apollo, actually, one of the most interesting hunters because of the fact that he technically is an auto attacker as the game goes on. And oh, yeah. crit is something that we should be talking about here, too. Like, the fact that crit is slowly coming back into the meta. Apollo with crit, especially with that passive audacity, can really make an impact in these team fights. Apollo is not the one falling from the sky. It's Cubo for red. And Trick's taking a follow up. Lobster's going to land on the ground. Greedy. And here comes the ultimate. Oh. But Cubo spins and wins. Yeah, he juked the wrong way there, Lobster. He expected Trick's to come in, but Trick's will fall down for being aggressive. Cubo gets a double after taking out Fumble, who made that rotation too. All members of Dignitas, well, at least four of them, still grouped, still the red. Gold Fury is an option. Cubo, though. Looking at Sir Cat. Not sure about this play. Man, Cubo going pistachios in this matchup. Pistachios? The... What's that mean? He's going nuts! Ah. He's just on top of his game. I didn't know where you were going. I'm like, why are you bringing up pistachios for? I, 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 I hate saying nuts when you're playing Rattle Tasker because it's too obvious. Oh, yeah. So trying to get away from the terminology. But any way you slice it, this dude is crushing it. 100% kill participation. You can if you roast him over a fire first. Three kills, zero deaths, four oh. assists. This guy has been a part of every engagement. Cubo Fred is looking so damn good. Yeah, okay. Good job, Tom. And put that in the highlight reel for Esports Weekly of the Caster Curse personified. Sometimes you do it on purpose. So That one wasn't on purpose, though. No, 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 it was. <laughs> look at, little, little insight, lifting the curtain. A lot of times we cast by looking at the, the mini-map. Mini -map. Yeah. So I see what's happening, and I kept going on because I knew Homie was dead 20 times. <laughs> So Kivo falls there. He's level 15. There were still two levels above fails in the jungle with the Magi's Cloak. Two Magi's Cloaks so far, as Arkel has completed his now. Meanwhile, Fumball are going for the Executioner. Got to give a shout out to Fails. First of all, he's one of the only, if the only, positive player on his team. Eh, they all have positive dispositions. I'm talking slash lines right now. But Fails, anytime I see these junglers returning to the world of Jotun's Wrath, I'm very happy. Crusher and Heartseeker are are very attractive right now, but Crusher sometimes is. you got to look at your old bay. And Jotun's Wrath on the Circuit, I think, is the way to go. Twenty percent CDR on the character, I like that a lot. I think the item's great. I do think it's interchangeable. I I almost feel that as Circuit though, Crusher feels a little bit better as first item, just because it applies that dot damage to go with your poisons for the dot 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 mechanic, but completely understand it. Cooldown reduction, very important. Plus, it's got great pen and power anyway. Exactly. I'd, I'd much rather, the 20% CDR, I'd much rather Sir Ket's the type of character where I want my abilities up. I want to zigzag in, do my nonsense, and be able to zigzag out. And thinking about it, Crusher is attack speed. And yeah. one thing you don't really need on Sir Ket is attack speed. Very ability-based focus, as you mentioned. So maybe Jotun's, you know, I can see the nod in that direction, in fairness. Ducky, gonna lose the blue buff on the right-hand side and get back to waving time. If attack speed sped up your first attack all of a sudden we are having a different conversation but attack speed only affects your subsequent attacks Gosh. your first animation your first attack will always have the animation of whatever it is your character brings to it subsequent attacks will have that attack speed but you always have to suffer that warm-up time and you know who the best god for that would be if that was the case i'm thinking it's real simple Hunbat. I, that's exactly what. Damn it. I wish you wouldn't let me say it. No, you waited too long. Hunbat. You had a window. Hunbat. Pop, 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 pop. You're dead. Yeah. Overhand smash. Basic. Like, triple your face. Basic. Monkey toss. Basic. Imagine like if you had ability speed. So, 
So no. overhand smash wouldn't take forever. Imagine getting zigzagged 20% faster by a Deathbane. That sounds, that sounds awful. This is, what happened? Where did it go? Did I just lag? No, that was just ability speed. That's Don't give designers ideas, by the way. Like, jeez. That right there, I want to bring that up. That's the interaction we were talking about with the two solo laners. As soon as Ducky goes for the for the uh, the breath, yeah. Variety's able to taunt him right out of it, and Ducky's got to find a different way to kill the creatures. And I think, I, I can't see it now, but I would like to go back in this game and maybe see what he leveled first, Ducky, in this lane matchup. Maybe the leap is actually a little bit better here just because it'll give him the sustain. Like, he can't yeah. die in this lane, and he hasn't, which is a good sign there. Obviously, against Athena, should be okay. But the main thing is, like, how is he wave clearing? I feel like he's probably been using the leap a little bit more often because the two's just so cancelable. Absolutely. Like I, that. I mean, well, I'm going to compare dog to dog. It's exactly as if you're playing Fenrir there. Fenrir's going to get taunted out of his Brutalize, so instead you level the Unchained. And these days, everybody levels the Unchained. Speaking of, speaking of what you were just talking about, imagine the ability, ability speed upon Fenrir. <laughs> The fastest dog in the world. That'd be fun. Close for days. Double kiss comes through. Immediately, Portal beats him. Dip from zero. Say goodbye, Kibo. Very <laughs> quick reaction <laughs> from zeros there. Who's still going the soul gem? This item has been touched. It's, it's, not, good. it's not the 40% that it used to be. I think it's 30% now. And it's still just as effective. It's going to be able to provide the damage that he wants without having to fully invest into uh, the nonsense, that, that the power that he forewent for the Kronos Pendant. Yeah, we'll see how this works out going forward as well, but it's a lot of stats on this too. The main thing for that, like health, I always say this about Soul Gem, it doesn't matter about that passive. The passive, yeah, sure. Whether it's 40 or 30 right now, doesn't matter to me. The difference is it's lifesteal, health, cooldown reduction, power. Like, huh, which one of those things <laughs> does the mage not care about? Oh, it cares about all of them. Team Dignitas off the map for a second, SK Gaming, that's my favorite use of the Nua Ultimate. If you watch the Pro League a lot, you're tired of me here, tired of me saying it. But the ability to see everyone on the map at a moment's notice is, I think, the most impactful wow. point of this mage. Gold Fury started up by SK. They want to try and take a fight here. They're going to lose a tower in the left hand side here to minions, or at least a full wave. Meanwhile, right hand side variety is going to be looking at a tier one there. The Gold Fury's been reset as Kubo and the boys of Dignitas look to turn this around. Red like a book. Fails get sent back to school by Kubo. Fred waiting for him to jump over the wall. Lobster can't do any jumping. It's going to be the opposition just pumping damage into him and Zeros gets number one after his six assists here in minute 21. Only tanks left on Fumballer but Fumballer gets torn. It has to beads as Ducky falls in front of his face. Now the beads are on cooldown. That's going to force the Aegis out of Fumballer too and he can't stand and bang against the whole of Dig. Meanwhile Zero zones away who the best. And I just don't get that call. Poor timing there. I like that call. SK Gaming's down to 3,000 gold, and the Gold Fury ties it up. I like that call if ultimates are chased out. Problem was, Dignitas had five blue diamonds on their side of the map. And with all of those ultimates, perhaps most importantly, Cubo Freds, SK Gaming gets smacked in the mouth for their transgressions, and Dignitas walk away with the objective, the team fight, and the secondary objective. This fire giant cannot be contested. Big swing. Absolute huge swing huge for Dignitas. Swing. Go to the graphs now before the fire giant goes down, because you can see how much this has just elevated Dignitas into a position of like almost unstoppable force here. 7.5k gold, 13,000 experience, Pyromancer in tow. The call from SK, they start gold when the tier one tower in left is being pushed and the tier one tower in right is being pushed. And Dick's like, where are they? I wonder where. I wonder where they could be. If they had pressure there, it doesn't allow Dick to be able to rotate as easy to try and get there. But it wasn't the case. Well, I mean, that's why they made the play. SK Gaming makes the play because Team Dignitas are pushing. They make the play because they're too far away to respond. Or the they? problem is there's two global ultimates. Giannis. Well, three technically. I mean, Kivo yes. Friends is a semi-global, so you got three on the board. You didn't burn one. <laughs> you want to know what? When I said two, I was counting Kuvo and the Giannis. Oh, yeah. I did not even think about variety, variety yeah. because it was Kuvo's through the mountains or whatever the hell the rat alt is called through to get mountains. over that wall <laughs> wouldn't know. that failed jumped. I'll tell you. Through so the I cosmos! I was so close! A mountain and a cosmos is a big difference between those two. Uh, Kilimanjaro is pretty big. Sure, so is the cosmos. K2 is pretty big. So is the cosmos. I wish I knew a third mountain, because it's you pretty big. You don't do. You've got Kilimanjaro, Everest. Oh, yeah, there you go. Mount there you go. Everest. The biggest one in the world. Yeah. 
the Appalachian Mountains, or if you're from the region, the Appalachian Mountains. Oh, that's that's the the, the vernacular there. And so I always I always like hearing uh, lo like local regional. So Worcester, Massachusetts, W O R Chester, right? You know how it's pronounced? Worcester. Don't ask me. I'm English. I know. <laughs> It's, it's Worcester. Oh, you, However, yeah, that would be true. it doesn't have a H in it in the UK. Yeah? No, it's just Worcester. Worcester Which is still weird. Worcestershire, but you guys say Shire every single time. No, we say Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. Is that the... No. Okay. Although I wish I, I should start making Americans say that. No, it's, it's Worcestershire. So, can I have some Worcestershire sauce, please, sir? Well, I mean, I know that's your hometown, the Shire. Well, we spoke about mountains right now. When SK, they have a mountain to climb in this second game. They're down nine kills at the moment. A ton of gold after the last couple of engagements. They're all really, the game was kind of broken with that gold period fight. Oh, w w without a doubt. That was clearly the turning point. If anybody has a different turning point in this game, I'll, I'll you know, I'll offer you a writing position here because that that was the absolute point of the well, game where write. everything turned around. Uh, they can write the SML blogs. Okay. It'd be better than what Finch does anyway, I guess. <laughs> Ouch. I'm allowed to call him out. He's on the desk today. Bring He'll it, say something back. Bringing it back to our commentary team. It's funny that I said you would live in the Shire. I think it's actually Taco would fit in those houses. Wow. Wow. We're making height jokes now. Is this where it's gone to in this game? Tier two time in the mid lane, gonna go down as the right hand one just falls to Kivo Fred. Easy. And now it's all up to where Dignitas wanna siege. SK on defense aren't terrible. The fog is very important to be able to clear these minion waves out. Watch out for Athena looking for the taunts on Noir. I like that, and I like Ducky here. Sir Kent, not my go. favorite defender, but the blink forward trying to come out of her hiding. Very good beads from Lobster, though. Give him credit where he's due. That blink was in, and the beads were popped before the taunt came through. Didn't need it, though. Arkel with a misplaced pillar, Lobster would have been fine. Well, Ducky might not be fine. He's half health already with one unstable vortex. Pops the ult, pulls Variety back in space inside fired. Didn't really find a home as Lobster took to the sky for safety. Backside, though, fails, looks for the carries, and gets an Aegis. He's going to zigzag away. And here comes the taunt onto the opposition. Ultimate is good. Fun ball gets Trick's tank. The Sirket poison's ticking. But the Phoenix still goes down. SK Gaming are able to fight back, taking care of the support, Graham. But Team Dignitas can do this step by yeah. step. One, one support for a Phoenix. That's fine. I wouldn't even mind. If they lose another person and get another Phoenix, that's okay too. Sure. There's nothing really SK can do to turn that tide in time with two members being dead. Because there's still every tower of the game up for Dignitas. So you got to push down the whole wave. And by that point, you get to a Phoenix. Best case scenario. You were talking about crit on the Apollo. I really love this chin side build coming out from Funball. Two major reasons. One, the audacity is going to speed up the way, speed up the attack, uh, the attacks coming out of him, obviously. But since Chinsai is a dedicated amount of damage, it doesn't matter what your power or how much your your basic attacks are hitting for. It's always the same. Whether you're attacking at one speed or 0.5 speed, there's no difference. So already, I like that build. But secondarily, Cubo Fred has opted for this very defensive-oriented build. And with all of the health specifically, both of the Masamune and some of the other options like Magi's Cloak, the Chinsai is going to cut down the jungler as well. Traditionally, you only have two targets for the for the Chinsai, the solo and the support. Cubo bringing this build into the jungle makes Funball that much more effective. <clears throat> if he hits his basics. Right now, sitting at 4,200 damage, Funball's nearly invisible. Not been able to get involved with the fight. Some of that will be down to the disarms from Trick's tank and also having to position so safely. And talking about variety here for a second, I like the Relic Blink for one reason and one reason alone. When you go in aggressive with the dash taunt, Apollo can measure you the moment you dash, which means you don't get your taunt off in time and you're yep. sitting duck them. But by going Blink, the reaction time is a lot slower. The oh, window yeah. is a lot tighter to be able to get that mez off in time. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Variety right now leading the charge. Neither taunt, or neither dash, oh, nor blink oh, just walks oh. up, and Ducky loses a quarter. Those were 200 basics coming out from Arkill at a time on Ducky. That was a frontline tank. The other frontline tank, who's level 15, who the best, is also out of this fight. It's just carries left to try and defend this, and Lobster. Recognizing Cubo is in the sky, has to hold defensively, like the call, but they're losing the Phoenix. Well, Cubo goes, yeah, Cubo goes ahead and just playing zone there. 
just walks out, makes sure that the enemy isn't able to come back and look at the right side, Phoenix, two birds down for Dignitas, shifting over to the left. Now to the left hand side they go, but a bit of a cheeky bait in the jungle, see if they can catch someone out of position. I like the idea of SK using the fog there. You saw them just walk in. Both Ducky and Fails looking for a cheeky attempt, but not going to happen. Maybe they can try it again, though, because they're going to need to at this left one. Otherwise, it's all over. Zero's making a stop for the red buff. Now rejoining the rest of the squad. SK Gaming in the mix, trying to get aggressive here versus Team Dignitas. Keeping out Keeper Fred, though. He's around that right-hand side, just keeping them honest. As Variety goes in and taunts up to two, keeps the pressure on. Fails trying to keep something going here, but still, nobody really low on the side of Dick just yet. Or maybe Tricks. Arkel still has the ultimate if and when somebody gets stunned out. Watching on the left-hand side, Arkel just pounding basics into that Phoenix. Here's the ultimate from Ducky, and the rest Response is an ultimate from Zeros, cutting the solo lane down to a hair of HP. And all three Phoenixes are down. Ducky will survive, but only for now. Lobster, meanwhile, different story surrounded between a pillar, a wall, and a rat. Fight still breaking out, though, as SK looking to get a couple of kills for nice. themselves. Will do so but I don't think it's enough to actually turn this around just yet. This is where Funball can make his impact, Graham. If Apollo comes through and takes care of everybody, Not allowed to. the game might be over. Instead, it's the Hunter, Arkel, rolling trips and collecting the pot. Zeros will pick up who the best is the final, and the minions will do the donkey work of bringing down the Titan, 17 to six. Zero's gonna wait for exactly 30 minutes, is he? <laughs> no, he's waiting for the minions to get the kill so that as casters we can say, <clears throat> minions. I'm never saying that unless he really is minions. That, that wasn't minions. That was? That was Dig. That was Dig performing <laughs> very well again. They find themselves the 2-0 victory here against SK. A lot of fans at home probably would have expected that with how EU is right now. It really sure. does feel like a 3-1-2 situation over in Europe. And it looks like it may conclude that way. Yeah, Dignitas just continuing on their reign of terror. Really impressive stuff. And like I said, the biggest takeaway for me here, because you can kind of predict this one, hopefully you didn't get that FP, is the fact that Dignitas are playing better than they have been because of that team unification. There was some individual play here, but all in all, game number one was clearly the squad. Game number two had some nice shining moments as well. Who do you guys at home think was MVP? Vote in the chat now and we'll get it over to the desk to break that down. But who have you got? For MVP in this game, I think it's Cubo Fred. I think the build was interesting. I'm not always a fan of the tanky jungler, especially when it's on characters that do like to use the power, but it was the right choice at the right time. And boy, those ultimates really made the plays. Dick 2-0. Desk, break it down. Thank you, Graham. Thank you, Tom. Finch and Totally here after game two of Dignitas versus SK. And this set kind of looked like a top in team up against a team that's still trying to find their footing. Totally. I mean, in that game, anything stand out to you in that one that made you think anything went wrong? I mean, Cuvo looked great. Arkel looked great. Zeros looked great. It was the early rotation here from Cuvo Fred's Ratatasker. He made the rotation here. He didn't even start Blink. He just made that play happen. <laughs> and more importantly, it was the two kills that went towards Arkel here that was playing the on her, right. trying to get an edge above Funballer's Apollo late game status, which was great for him. And then afterwards, a couple minutes after, the 10-minute rotation here from Variety, you could try to shut him down by taking away control gods such as Sobek, but then he'll lean on another control guardian such as the Athena. So yeah. has some tricks in his pocket. I can't wait till we see a Ymir solo lane. Oh, that's going to be scary. Clearly, he's very competent playing these guardians over in the solo lane. The Athena even having a pretty good matchup up against the Cerberus. And we got to see him put some of that to good use in that last game. But your MVP is going to be none other than Kivo Fred in the jungle for this Dignitas roster playing the Ratatosker. Going 5 1 and 11. It's looking like they're two. So, certainly a strong KDA and certainly had a big impact for this Dignitas team. Made so many plays happen here. His rotations were just so fruitful everywhere he went. You know, he made the first gank in the dueling, but it didn't really matter because he was cleaning everybody up. Even who did best playing the Sobek there. I thought for a second that it would have been potentially the Soling Sobek, but no. A little bit of a switch up here for SK Gaming, but that didn't deter Dignitas from what they wanted to do with the global pressure between not only the Ratatasker, but they're also 
first comfort pick Giannis. And the Athena. I mean, they had tons of that global pressure, but Cubo Fred in particular, I mean, he didn't even build particularly damagey this game. He was able to leverage his lead so well in this game, Anatoly, using the through the cosmos to set up for the rest of the team to chase down low health targets. And like we're seeing here, just harassing the back line of SK. I mean, they never got to feel comfortable, did Lobster and Funball. That's true. And he was a part of almost every single kill. I yeah. think he only missed out on one specifically. And this allows Dignitas to cut the gap a little bit right behind Energy and Rival in the standings. Yeah, and this is what Dignitas needed to try and catch back up as we are going to take a look at how everything is shaken down in Europe. Energy, Dignitas now are the two up near the top with Rival right there with them. All three with six wins. Once they all play the same amount of games, though, as Energy will be playing twice here today, everything will shake out. It's very important now for Dignitas to see where Energy lies up after so this one. Because they could only beat either Rival or Energy. They can't beat up both. And if Rival can just overcome a little bit more victories, then they're going to secure their spot. If there's ever a situation where Energy and Dignitas are tied right. in the series, it'll go to Energy with them winning those two sets. Yeah, so they'd kind of rather it be Energy be the clear top one yes. so they could pass over Rival. We'll end up seeing Energy. That's going to be the very next set up against Obey. Used to be a pretty hype matchup, but with OK slipping a bit, we'll see if they can hang with the big boys here after the break.